In this video, I'm going to write a C program for playing rock, paper, scissors. So playing rock, paper, scissors is going to involve the AI randomly throwing either rock, paper, or scissors. That means I'm going to need random numbers to help me with that. So I'll include stdlib.h and time.h because these libraries include functions for working with random numbers. I'm also going to include stdbool.h so that way I can make a Boolean variable as well. And I'm going to define a few constant values as well to hopefully make the code a bit more intuitive to read. I'd like to write things like if the player throw is rock and the AI throw is paper, then this is going to happen. I'd like to use the terms rock, paper, and scissor in my code. So I'll say here, number define rock one, number define paper two, and number define scissors three. And now I can actually use the terms rock, paper, and scissors in my code and hopefully make it just easier to read. The first thing we're going to do is seed the random number generator. So I'll say here s rand and I'll provide it with a seed. We have to give the random number generator a different value every time we run our program to ensure that we get different random numbers every time we run our program. That's what we call seeding the random number generator. What I'm going to do is I'm going to seed it with the current time. So I'll say here time null. So time is a function that comes from this time.h library. And when you give it the argument null, it returns the current time. So by seeding the random number generator with the current time, every time our program runs, that's a value that's always going to be different, right? Because the time is always changing every time our program runs. So that'll then ensure that we have random values when we run our program, and they're going to be different each time. Next, I'll say int player throw is equal to zero. And then I'll say int AI throw is equal to zero. And those are just going to be variables that store the actual throws themselves. And then I'll say here, bool draw is equal to false. That's going to keep track of whether the game was a draw or not. And I'll say here, do while draw. So the way that rock, paper, scissors works is that if both players throw rock, the game continues. You just throw again because you have to determine a winner. So we're going to have a do while loop. And this do while loop is going to run so long as the game was a draw. And then the first thing we'll do is ask the user to actually enter their throw. So we'll say printf, and we'll give them a menu here. We'll say select your throw, and then we'll give them some options. We'll say rock, and then we'll say paper next. So printf, we'll say two, paper, and then scissors is next. So we'll say printf three is going to be scissors. And then we'll ask them for their selection. So we'll say selection, and we'll store their selection into this player throw variable. So we'll say here scanf percent %d, and we'll say and player throw, and we'll store their selection into that player throw variable. And then to come up with the AI throw, we're going to do the random number generation. We'll say here AI throw is equal to, and we're going to generate some random value. Now I've got it such that rock is one, paper is two, and scissors is three. I've also asked the user via this menu to enter rock, paper, and scissors using the values one, two, and three. So basically, rock is one, paper is two, scissors is three. So I can generate the AI throw by randomly generating a number between one and three. So here I'll call rand, and rand is a function that's going to give me a random number between zero and some very, very, very large integer. To get that random number in the range of one to three, I'm going to say modulus three. So if we take any integer from zero to some very, very large number, and I do modulus three, that's going to give me the remainder of taking that number and dividing it by three. Any integer divided by three is going to have a remainder of zero, one, or two. So this is effectively going to give me numbers in the range 0, 1, or 2 at random. I need numbers in the range 1, 2, 3. So I can just take this 0, 1, 2 value here, add 1 to it, and then altogether, 
This is going to give me numbers in the range one, two, and three. So now we've got each of one of the moves there from the player and from the AI. So next we should output what the AI throw was. So that way the player understands what they've done. We'll say if AI throw is equal to rock, printf AI throws rock. So printf and then AI throws rock. Else if the AI throw is paper, we'll output the AI throws paper. And then else if the AI throw is scissors, we'll printf that the AI throw was scissors. Okay, so now at least the player knows what the AI has done and they know what to expect based on that. The next thing we're gonna have to do is implement the core game logic, which is comparing the player throw to the AI throw to determine who, if anyone, wins or whether we have a draw, in which case the game needs to go on. So we'll say here, draw is equal to false. We're gonna start off with the assumption that the game is going to be won or lost. If there is a draw, we'll set draw equal to true. And we'll handle all of those cases as the else case. We're gonna have to have a bunch of if else of cases to handle the different win and loss situations. So we'll say here, if the player throw is rock and the AI throw is scissors, then this means the player wins. So we'll say printf, and we'll explain why. We'll say rock beats scissors, you win. And then we'll say else if the player throw is rock and the AI throw is paper, we'll print F that paper beats rock. And we'll say you lose. So we won't sugarcoat it for the player. We'll say else if the player throw is scissors and the AI throw is paper, then we'll say printf scissors beats paper, you win. And we've got a few more cases here. Else if the player throw is scissors, and if the AI throw is rock, We'll print F, rock beats scissors, you lose. Okay, a few more cases here. We'll say else if the player throw is paper and the AI throw is rock. We'll say print F, paper beats rock, you win. And then one more else if case here for the win-loss cases. We'll say else if the player throw is paper and the AI throw is scissors. Then we'll say printf scissors beats paper and you lose. And then we'll have the else case, which is going to handle a draw. We'll say printf draw play again and we'll set draw equal to true and when we set draw equal to true that's going to cause the game to run again because we have to run again until we determine a winner so we should have now a working implementation of rock paper scissor here let's save it and test it out so we'll compile it and run it, it says select your throw i'll pick rock says AI throws paper, paper beats rock, you lose. So we'll try it again here. 
Maybe I'll have better luck with paper. I'll try paper. AI throws rock. Paper beats rock. You win. Okay, so it seems to be working okay so far. I'll run it again. Put in scissors. AI throws scissors. Draw. Play again. Then I'll put in maybe rock. AI throws scissors. Rock beats scissors. You win. All right, so we now have a working implementation of rock, paper, scissors in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.